Welcome to this Clinic Explains Finance video. This week, a topic that's hopefully of general interest not just to young people, but to anyone contemplating a career in finance, and that is how young people should actually think about that kind of career. Now, it applies to other careers, so I could take off the words in finance, and it would probably still work, but obviously I work in financial services, so I'm going to give you the benefit of one or two of my findings as we go through. Okay, so what is a good job? Well, it's a bit of a cliche, but everyone would like a job that is enjoyable, one that you're good at, and ideally both together. But my point is going to be that finding those two together can be quite tricky. Now, obviously if you work in financial services, you're not doing it for charitable reasons usually, so you also hope to get reasonably well paid. But that tends to come as a function of box one and box two, circle one and circle two. So, the challenge is landing both elements, something you're good at, something you enjoy, not easy. So you've got to be prepared to compromise, especially in the early stages of a career. A lot of people give up too quickly and or they can't see a route to something they're good at and enjoy in the long term. So like investing, a long-term approach is best. Easy for me to say, but a long-term approach, if I was talking to the 18-year-old me now, would be the one I'd recommend. So, let's talk about Tim, one of my favourite topics. Now, in terms of what I do now, I wasn't born able to do this stuff, so I'm Head of Education at Killick. That includes a range of Killick Explains products, weekly videos, example right now, short guides, if you haven't seen them, how-to guides, friendly, jargon-free, education-based, seminars, and a quarterly magazine as part of my role called Confidant, and there's a cover example of it. Now that's a great portfolio of different tasks, but where did I start? Nowhere near that lot. So going backwards, how did I get there? I was deputy editor of Money Week magazine, so that's a slightly lateral move, some could argue. Ten years of city financial training, which is a posh way of saying teaching for professionals who work in finance, and before that, I qualified the chartered accountant with Ernst & Young. Now, how does this relate, apart from being fascinating, to me, how does this relate to the point I was just making? Well, if I were to plot those four moves on a chart, one axis being my ability to do the job and the other one being my enjoyment of it, how would my career look so far? And this is my point about, it with hindsight, looking for both straight away is a little bit unrealistic and realism is important when it comes to careers. Chartered accountancy, I wasn't that good at it, didn't enjoy it would probably be true today if I was to try and go off and be a finance director or a financial controller. That's life. Good qualification, but it goes bottom left. Now, you don't want to be doing something bottom left for your whole career, otherwise you become pretty miserable. So what next? Okay, there's city teaching. Now, it wasn't always in that box. Something I was really good at, towards the end, didn't really enjoy it. 50, 60 hours, standing on your feet, talking to bright, ambitious, graduates in a lot of cases, senior management in other cases, towards the end, as someone put it, if you're a board teacher, make a move. So I did. Now, when I started at Money Week magazine, I loved it, always fancied editing, writing, but I wasn't particularly good at it. Took a right battering from my boss, got the hang of it, was made deputy editor, so it didn't always sit top left. It did move to where you want to be, but it takes a while to get there sometimes, which is top right. Now, no job is perfect. I could be on a beach, for example, and probably be happier in some ways. But the bottom line is the components of my current job draw on aspects of all of those different ones. And if I was being honest, um, not on a bad day, but I'm being honest, that's probably the right box for it. But here's the point. I'm over 50. It took a while to get there. It didn't just happen overnight. And in the meantime, I had to take a few swerves in order to get to where I am now. So, what am I saying? If I was talking to the 18-year-old me, which would look a bit weird, but imagine it for a moment, what would I say? Work hard. Malcolm Gladwell talked about the 10,000-hour rule. 10,000 hours required to be an expert in anything. All right, now, that's just a number that sells a book. But the point is, no one gets a skill set just through pure luck. Be patient and also be realistic. Yes, I always wanted to be an editor or a writer but it took a long time to get the break required given that I didn't start in journalism training age 19 or 16 like a lot of other, other people do. And make sure you seize the right opportunities. Now, it's a cliche to say seize all opportunities because some of them are rubbish. That's why businesses go bust, people get it wrong. But try and make sure that when an opportunity comes along, you can see it for what it is. So remain open-minded. Don't give up on the end goal. 
So there you have it. Any questions? Tim Bennett at killit.com. And if you want to watch videos on a range of other financial markets topics, then it's killit.com forward slash learn.